Alrighty guys, what's going on? Linky here. Today, it is finally time to go through my review for Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. It's been a long time coming and I have a lot of thoughts that I want to get to in this review. After playing the game and playing it a little bit for a second time in Shining Pearl, there's a lot of positives to cover about these remakes. There's a lot of things that they did right. There's a lot of things that they managed to capture from the original games and preserve in these remakes. But there was also a lot of missed opportunities, a lot of things that if you go back, you can criticize Ilka and the Pokemon Company for decisions that should have been made that weren't. We're going to cover all of that in today's review. So let's jump right into things. Now, in doing this video, I'll be honest, I have lied a little bit. You guys have probably seen dozens of reviews for Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl up to this point. Every news outlet on the planet, every Pokemon YouTuber has put out a video going over their thoughts and what they think of this game. I could do the same thing, but my general points and my general critiques are going to be roughly the same as everybody else. I did not hate Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. I did not love Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. I enjoyed my time with it. There were pieces of the game that I felt really shined more than I expected them to, specifically the music and the in-game battle backgrounds and animations I thought were very well done. I thought the Pokemon models themselves, granted they are the same as they've been for a while now, really popped in whatever lighting engine they were running for, Bril for Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. Those are all positives, and those are things that I haven't seen communicated as much from some people, some of the more critical takes. Uh, going over the art style and going over various other pieces of this game. Don't really highlight those. I'm not going to do a full review going over point by point all of these different pieces to BDSP. I want to talk about a more essential question. Are these games worth it? These games are $60. If you buy both so you can get every single Pokemon, so you don't have to trade with a friend to complete the Pokedex, that is a $120 roughly dollar purchase that you're going to be making. Even one, like I said, is $60. Is this game worth it? Is getting the Generation 4 experience on the Nintendo Switch worth this amount of money? That is the central question that we are trying to answer in today's video. Now, before going any further with this review, I just wanted to mention that the vast majority of you guys who are watching this video and hopefully enjoying it aren't subscribed to the channel now, of course, as I've always mentioned. Subscribing is free and you can unsubscribe at any time. And if you do subscribe, be sure to hit that notification bell so you never miss another upload. We got a ton coming this month with Pokemon Legends Arceus releasing in just a few weeks. So be sure to subscribe and you'll never miss another upload. And the biggest thing that I want to cover in attempting to answer the question of are these remakes worth it is going through a little bit of a timeline of where the Pokemon franchise has come to in the last, let's say, eight or nine years. The Pokemon has advanced. A lot and it is very apparent when you compare BDSP to some of the newer games Sun and Moon, Sword and Shield, even something like Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee. There are a lot of quality of life improvements in modern Pokemon games since around Generation 6 that have really modernized the Pokemon franchise in a lot of ways. There are some of those that have been included in BDSP, but there are a lot of changes that don't exist in these games. One example are wild encounters. In Sword and Shield, wild Pokemon encounters didn't just happen like that. Wild encounters were twofold. You could go into the grass, and you could see wild Pokemon pop up out of it, animated in the overworld, and you could run into them if you chose to and then battle them. You could see what you were running into. Another feature that happened in the grass is that you could see a Pokemon that was going to appear random by an exclamation mark, and you could choose to run towards that exclamation mark and encounter that Pokemon if you wanted to. But you could also go in the opposite direction and avoid that encounter. In BDSP, it is going back to generation four. You are dealing with the high level of random encounters when you're walking through the grass, when you're running through a cave, when you're surfing across the seas, you're getting these random encounters. And there's a lot of them. There are some changes to random encounters depending on how long the pause is between you getting the encounter and then you actually starting the battle. It can tell you a little bit about EVs and IVs of the Pokemon you're encountering. So there are some modernizations there that honestly are brand new. They don't really exist in any of the modern Pokemon games except for BD 
ADSP, but we are rewinding, essentially, to Generation 4, the mechanics of Generation 4, the need for HMs. Now, to be fair to Ilka, HMs are moved to the Pokatch. You don't have to register a certain Pokemon with a certain move now keep to fill up a move slot then for you to use it in the field. You don't have to do that anymore. But the mechanic itself still exists, and it's still a hindrance in the overworld. You do have to navigate these, these spaces in the game using your Pokatch. So we are going backwards. This is a faithful remake. Graphically speaking, listen game's not the best. There are moments, there are towns and routes where I think the art style mixed with the lighting really shines. I think it looks quite pleasant to look at. Battle animations is another place where the art style really pops. I think the environmental backgrounds look great. I think the players meshed with the Pokemon models look really good. Overall, the Pokemon really pop in battle as well. I think all of that is positive. With that being said, this game is not going to win any graphical fidelity awards or anything of the sort. This is an art style very much designed around, let's take the original Generation 4 look and picture what it would look like if that style continued to evolve into a 3D plane of existence. And they don't nail it. They don't. There are specific routes and areas, generally routes where there's rain or uh, some more muggy routes, if you were, where the shadows don't really come into effect as much. And the, the character walking around the overworld looks really ugly. It looks rougher than rough. When I was doing my live stream uh, a month and a half ago, I criticized it as I was playing. I was like, this doesn't look good. This needed more polish. There needed to be something else to do that you could have done with the lighting engine to fix this because it looks like the character is just plopped on top of a really ugly, washed out looking environment. And that character is just walking around, like kind of floating over whatever area or design of the ground that player character is on. It doesn't, it, it doesn't look good in certain instances. And you can't have massive pieces of the game, massive parts of the world you're exploring look virtually unplayable to the naked eye. There's two different routes that I can immediately pull out off the top of my head and say they don't look good. Those two routes are the swamp next to Pastoria City. Looks horrific, honestly. And the other route is the route northeast of Salacion Town, the one when you're going to Veilstone City, the one right before Veilstone City. It looks bad when it's raining. It doesn't look pleasant. The entire overworld gets drowned out and it's not enjoyable. Lastly, in trying to make a determination, I wanna get into the hurdles you're gonna fall into or run into. I don't know how to talk about hurdles. Just by the fact that this is a remake of Diamond and Pearl and not Platinum. You're not getting the best Pokedex in the Sinnoh region. Best Pokedex is the Platinum Pokedex. You're not getting the best post game. The best post game is the Battle Frontier and the Battle Areas and the extra galactic story content that it adds in Platinum. The relationship between Volkner, not Volkner, oh my goodness, Barry and his father, who is not Volkner, but someone who looks a little bit similar, is also better done in Pokemon Platinum. There's a lot of big Platinum things that are missing. There are benefits, there are additions, I should say, in BDSP that didn't exist in Platinum. The underground is the best it's ever been. If you're not someone who loved decorating a secret base, but you like the efficiency and use cases of it, this adds that in terms of the Pokemon statues and you get an extra added benefit. The, uh, the little dens also make exploring Grand Underground a lot of fun and it's a cool multiplayer feature as well. They've done that well. Additions like, you know, the fact that we have more high def versions of these music tracks, also a positive for this game. The music sounds incredible in almost every location. There was some concern when the game first got leaked before there was a patch that the music didn't sound great. That was fixed. That was patched. The music sounds really good. You're going to run into that diamond and pearl issue. The story in Platinum, in my opinion, and I've said this in multiple videos now, is just better. Having the evil team trying to get Dialga and Palkia makes a lot more sense for what Cyrus is trying to do. How can you recreate the universe with just the deity that controls time and not the deity that controls space? Doesn't doesn't make as much sense. You could even say he needs Arceus too. Like if, you, if we're critiquing the story itself, that's one thing. But the Platinum story makes a lot more sense and the Platinum story incorporates Garatina perfectly because Garatina comes out, realizes there's this disturbance going on in the universe and says, we're not doing that and drags Cyrus away. It adds a lot. 
It adds a lot of really good story content. It adds a lot of good stakes to what you're doing. It's handled a lot better. They hit a home run with Platinum in terms of the story when you're fixing things from Diamond and Pearl. Most of these fixes aren't in BDSP. Looker. Looker's not here. The International Police. It's not present. Romanus Park is a nice addition. It adds some really cool things for catching legendaries. This doesn't hit much with me at all. I'm going to do a whole video on this in the future, but legendaries and catching them just never really feel good to me. I don't really understand how you can catch these incredibly super powerful, supernatural almost beings in the Pokemon world. I don't like it. I think Pokemon stories would be done a lot better if you didn't catch the mascot legendary at the end, or maybe if we moved away from mascot legendaries as a whole. But I digress. Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl are perfectly fine games. They're perfectly fine Pokemon games. If you love the Pokemon formula, and you love these older classic games and the, these takes on the formula, you're gonna have fun with this remake. If you have some, if you are someone who can spare $60 and buy video games like this, you know, on a decently regular basis, I would say these games are fun. These games are enjoyable. You're gonna put hours into them that you're gonna enjoy experiencing. Raising a team is still fun. The Pokemon formula is great. And that's why it's always going to be hard for me personally to give a rating that's like a five out of 10, a four out of 10. These games are solid sevens. Seven out of tens. They weren't wonderful. They're not the best modern Pokemon experience I've ever played. But I do put a lot of value personally in being able to explore the Sinnoh region on the most modern hardware. I'm not a big emulation guy. I love having the console itself and playing the game where it was intended. So having these games on the newest console, the console I have the most quickly available to me whenever I need it, especially with it being a region that I love, that has value. For me, these games are worth the price tag because I am a Pokemon fan. But there are changes that should have happened. There are patches that, if this was any other dev, I think we would demand. These games have issues, issues that should be resolved, frankly, should have been resolved before the games came out. But there's also enough good here that I think it's a Pokemon game that fans should enjoy and should try to get some fun times out of. With that being said, I would love to know what you guys think. Do you like that I structured this a little bit differently? I wanted to phrase it in a different way instead of it just being a review, even though I am clickbaiting in the title, I apologize. Let me know. Do you agree with my rating? Are there things you agree with and disagree with in my critiques and my praises of BDSP? Was I a little too harsh? Was I not harsh enough? Let me know down in the comments section. And as I mentioned before, be sure to subscribe to the channel so you never miss any new Pokemon content or any other gaming content that I make. I've been Linky, and we'll see you all in the next video. Peace out.